My name is Ed Mitchard and I'm a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh. Um, I'm going to talk today about my work mapping deforestation and degradation using satellite data. Africa is the second largest area of tropical forest after South America, um, but it's much less studied. Um, we don't really know very much about the biology of these forests. Um, we don't know how fast they're changing. Um, climate change is definitely having a big impact on them. So in Cameroon, the forests are expanding rapidly into the savanna. And I got to spend two months um, in the middle of Bam Jerem National Park. Um, it's a very big national park in the centre of Cameroon, on the boundary between tropical forest and savanna. It's very remote, you have to drive for a couple of days, so it took a very long time to get there, but it was a real privilege to be there. Um, we were the, um, the kind of first scientists to go and explore this park. It's a very interesting place to see whether trees are expanding or uh, regressing in an area because it's on this zone of tension between tropical forest and savanna. So when you come into this national park, you come in from the north by dugout canoe. So you start in the savannas, which are very hot and dry, these tall grasses everywhere and places they've been burnt, so you just see kind of black charcoal. Um, but gradually it gets more humid, um, noisier, with more birds and animals around as you go into the tropical forest area. Uh, eventually you get some shade, which is great, um, as you go under the, the big 30 metre tall uh, tropical forest trees come by the side of the river. Um, you do hear some big animals, so you hear um, monkeys calling in the trees and elephants. So these forests are capturing carbon a lot um, and locking it up in the woods in these forests. Um, but in other areas of Africa, um, deforestation is happening very rapidly. There's also a lot of degradation going on where some trees are removed, um, but the area stays as, as forest, still looks green from our normal satellite data. Um, so we know these forests are changing, um, but we don't really know in what ways very well, so it's important to study them. Red has two meanings these days. There's the colour um, and there's the acronym with an extra D on the end. This is Reducing Emissions from Deforestation and Forest Degradation, so R-E-D-D. -D. Um, it's a UN-mandated uh, programme, um, the first ideas for which started in the, the early 90s, but didn't really get going into the mid-2000s. Um, the idea was to include uh, red within the UN climate agreement that was meant to be signed at Copenhagen in 2009. That didn't happen, but fortunately it was agreed in December 2015. It was very exciting. Um, so the idea of RED is that developed countries will pay developing countries to reduce their rate of deforestation and degradation. So us developed countries have mostly cut down almost all of our forests in order to allow our development. Um, we should, it should be perfectly allowable in theory for developing countries to do the same. Why wouldn't they? They want to spread out their agriculture and, and develop and get richer. Um, but that's not in the whole world's interests. So developed countries with more money should be able to pay these developing countries to keep their forests and develop in a cleaner path than we did. So I hope that my research can help in a tiny way in helping RED happen. Um, I'm part of an ever-growing network, really, of international scientists working on mapping where the carbon is stored in forests, so trying to map above-ground biomass, as it's called, and trying to map where that's changing. Um, so trying to see where deforestation and degradation are happening. Um, that's absolutely necessary for RED to exist because countries need to know what their current rate of loss of carbon is from trees so that they can target programmes to try and change it. And developed nations also want to be able to monitor how their money is being spent and check that it's working properly, effectively. So the science has to be there in order for RED to work, otherwise the, the money will just be misspent, it won't be targeted correctly, and it, probably it won't work at all. I use different types of satellite data to map changes in forest cover. Um, so you can use optical satellite data, which is effectively similar to a digital camera on a satellite. Uh, forests look green because trees are green, um, and grassland and savanna, especially in the dry season, will look yellow, and you can tell the difference between these two. We have satellite data of this type dating back to the early 1970s, so we can look at vegetation change now over quite a long period using that method. However, that optical data doesn't tell you the differences in intact forest, because a forest that's 10 metres tall and doesn't store much carbon looks the same as a forest that's 50 metres tall and maybe has much more carbon storage. We therefore use other methods using radar or LIDAR data that can tell how much carbon is stored in these, these bigger forests compared to the small forests. My research is mostly involved in this, this kind of more developing technology with radar and LIDAR data.